Thank you for joining us on this exciting day for Boise State Athletics, Boise State Football, and Boise State University. You will hear from Boise State University President Dr. Marlene Trump, Boise State Director of Athletics Jeremiah Dickey, and the new head coach of Boise State Football, Spencer Danielson. Each will provide opening remarks before we open it up to questions. Once Coach Danielson is finished with his remarks, we will take questions for all three participants. We will have a microphone to use for questions, so please raise your hand and we will bring it to you. A term sheet, which is subject to State Board of Education approval, will be available later today. With that, please welcome the President of Boise State University, Dr. Marlene Trump. I'm so happy to be here today, and I am beyond delighted to welcome Spencer Danielson as our next head football coach pending our state board approval process. There's no one who watches Boise State football who doesn't know that I'm a huge Boise State football fan. I'm on the sidelines with the team at every game. I care deeply about our student athletes. I care so much about them that they're the focus of my energy and they're the reason that I'm down there on that field. One of the extraordinary things about Spencer is that's why he's down there on that field, is for those young men. And we have been very proud as a university that our front door of athletics, that front porch that we have, has been characterized by integrity, creativity, scrappiness, insight, cleverness, that sort of giant killing attitude that has really made us special. That's true across this whole university. And what we want to do, the reason we do those things, is to drive forward amazing outcomes for our students, for our state, and for the future. And that's precisely what drives Spencer, too. I've known this for years, but now all of Bronco Nation knows that, too, because you've had an opportunity to see him in action. You've seen his character. You've seen the depth of love that those student athletes have for him and that he has for them. This is a very special moment for all of us. And it's not just about the wins and losses. It's about what we do to elevate the experience of the young people on that field, of the young people in the stands, of the future of this university and the future of this state. So I'm delighted to welcome Spencer. I'm also very pleased to present someone who hasn't seen his family much lately because he's been working so hard on this search. And he works hard all the time, but he did a thorough process. I charged him to go out and find the best candidates in the country to thoroughly vet those candidates and to choose the person who matched our values and the character of this program. And that's what he did. So I want to thank you, Jeremiah, and I want to thank your whole committee who worked so hard together to make this happen. And I'm happy to yield the mic to you to talk about the process. Good morning. Hello. Thank you. Welcome uh, to campus, and, and it's good to see some familiar faces. Uh, before I get started, I want to thank our committee. Matthew Ewing, Mike Walsh, Heather Berry, myself, and a number of people behind the scenes who helped us over the last three weeks. It's very difficult when you're running a department with 18 sport programs and you're in season um, to be pulled away and, and not necessarily have uh, the connectivity back to everyone that you're responsible for leading. And that's why we have teammates. We say it a lot. We say it takes a team. It very much takes a team. 
And I cannot thank our staff, I cannot thank this committee enough for their help through this process. Drew Turner and CSA was elite. They did an amazing job and I would be remiss if I did not thank them for their help through this process. I know where we ended up, but the process is key. Someone was going to earn this. That's my responsibility to you. That's my responsibility to Bronco Nation. That's my responsibility to our student athletes and this great institution that I'm fortunate to be a part of. We were looking for someone with a positive attitude that would empower people around them. They would lead appropriately through adversity that cared about the student athlete and their experience, which is more important today than it's ever been. Someone who thinks innovative, innovatively, I apologize. A lot of coffee this morning. <laughs> Someone who thinks innovatively, who wants to be a teammate and who's gonna lock arms with us as we prepare for what's next. You all understand my expectations for this department and for our, and what we represent in this community. And I needed someone that was going to stand next to me and lock arms and move us forward. We know what's ahead of us. And we're always thinking about what's next. But today, it's about Spencer Danielson and his wife, Rachel, and their family. I'm so grateful for them. I love them dearly. It's been awesome to see him grow. We talked to the team about this yesterday. Three weeks ago, we could have quit. We could have melded in. Coaches could have started to apply for jobs. Kids could have entered the transfer portal immediately because of the changes that we made, but they didn't. We had a 0.1% chance of playing in that championship game Saturday. Point one, we always have a chance. There's always an opportunity. And as at Broncos, we face that adversity and we fight. And that's exactly what we did under his leadership and we won the championship. It does not surprise me because that's who we are. With that being said, and our next leader of our Bronco football team, this institution, and our community. I would like to welcome your head coach, Spencer Danielson. Oh, here. You don't have to put it on. It will be big. For those that know me, my biggest goal is not to cry too much up here. So, uh, you know, bear with me as I go through this because I promise you it's coming from the heart. Um, you know, first off, just want to thank Jesus Christ. I mean, that's my driving force and it's all for him. And then, you know, for my beautiful wife, Rachel, just thank you for, I mean, I love you more than life itself, babe. And that's the true head coach right there. Uh, as Coach Cutter will tell you as well, I mean, that's the only way we can do what we do is because of my beautiful wife, our beautiful Eleanor, who can't wait for Santa to come through here in a couple weeks. And then we have little Rosie, who's not feeling well. She's at home. So, babe, I love you more than life itself. Also, just want to, you know, thank you to President Trump. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for believing in us. And I promise you we won't let you down. To Jeremiah Dickey. I love you, I appreciate you, your leadership shines through you, and I can't wait to do this together. You know, to the whole search committee, just going through the process the right way, doing it the right way, all the checks and balances to find the right coach for this program, thank you. Thank you for that. To all Bronco Nation, I mean, selling out Albertson Stadium week in and week out, traveling to our games, being there, supporting us no matter what, thank you. I mean, this is a family. It is not about just our players or our staff. It is about everybody involved here, Bronco Nation, everybody watching, everybody here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And we're going to need every bit of it going forward. And obviously to our players. We have a phenomenal group of young men in that football facility. 
that had every opportunity to flinch, to look for other places, to maybe just slide by, and they never did. And it had nothing to do with me. It's because they love each other. And they have a piece of my heart I will never get back. And to our players, thank you for impacting me every single day. To our staff, same thing, never flinched. Could have found a way out, never did. And once again, thank you to them. And I want to just thank you know the past coaches at Boise State. I understand the seat that I'm taking over. Coach Cutter, who's in attendance today, thank you, Coach. I appreciate you a ton. You know, Coach Peterson, Coach Harson, Coach Avalos, all coaches that have dearly impacted me. And I understand the seat that I'm going into, and I understand the gravity of it. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. You know, this is my dream job. Why is it the dream job? Because of the people here. Me and my wife came to Boise, Idaho, a kid from Southern California, played Division II football. I know I look like I should still be playing in the NFL, but I didn't. <laughs> and had no affiliation to Boise, Idaho, seven years ago. When I told my wife we were moving out here, she started crying, and it was not happy tears. <laughs> and now, and the second we moved out here, after we changed our plates, obviously, from the California plates, after we changed our plates, I mean, this place has opened their arms to me and my family from day one. Had no reason to. We did nothing for them. The community, this place, the staff, the players had opened their arms to us. And seven years ago, it's changed my life since. And this has become home. Both our two girls were born in the hospital right behind me. And the whole step of the way, this place has become home for us. This is my dream job for the people, for the people in this room, for the people in that building, for our players, for our staff, for this community. That's why this is my absolute dream job. And I believe, like it says in the, in the Bible, that I've been called to this place for such a time as this. And I believe that God doesn't make mistakes. And although life sometimes things will come at us that you don't know why it happened, but I believe that we're all here for such a time as this. I believe that this place, Boise, Idaho, Idaho, Boise State University, that the best is still to come. And as I've talked through with it with a lot of people and people that have heard me speak and our players, and this is just me speaking. This isn't Boise State. This is just me. I focus on three things. Love Jesus, work hard, treat people right. I have it written in my office. Every day I look at those three things. I'm like, Spencer, you've got to do those three. It doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean we're going to win every football game we play in. But those three things, I can promise you, they will not change. That's me. That is me. And one of, my, one of our players, DJ Schramm, for my birthday, went around the room and said one thing you love about your coach. And he looked at me with tears in his eyes and said, Coach, I love you because you never change. And I promise you, speaking to our Bronco family right now, that's not changing. I'm passionate about this place. I love the people here in this place. That is who I am. That is never changing. And I can promise you this, too. When you watch this team, when you watch this family play, it will not be perfect. But I promise you will be a group of young men that play fast, they play smart, and they play together. That is a promise. And we're going to work our tail off to do that consistently. And it's going to be a program that is built on love. And love can easily be taken as all rainbows and butterflies and, oh, it's just all fun and games. That's not what I'm talking about. Love is action. Love is sacrifice all the time. If I tell you I love you, that means I'm ready to sacrifice for you. I'm ready to put my own agenda aside, and I'm going to do something for you because I love you. I love this team. I love our players, our staff, this community, and that's action. That is sacrifice. The same thing those players did and will continue to do. It's because they love each other. That doesn't mean everything goes well. That doesn't mean everything's perfect. It never will be. Life's not that way. But you're going to watch a group of young men, a staff, continue to push a community that is founded on love, and that is action, and that is sacrifice. You're going to see a team that is tough. We're going to work our tail off together, day in and day out, and doing it the right way, impacting the community. A team that is disciplined, doing the right thing, not the easy one. And once again, doing it with a smile on our face. You can work your tail off, make the hard decisions, not the easy ones, and still have a smile on your face. That is life. That's the thing I tell our players all the time is, what I... Coaches, teachers, influencers, 
I know at some point when I stand before the good Lord, I'm going to answer for everything I did, good and bad. And like it says in the Bible, to whom much is given, much is required. And I am fully aware of that. And it keeps me up at night that day when I meet our Lord and Savior and all the men that I've impacted and who I maybe didn't do it the right way. But I promise you we're going to tail off to do it the right way, where it's a group of young men that love each other. They're tough. They're disciplined. And at the end of it, a group of young men that compete in everything they do. Because they're sometimes lost where, oh, yeah, compete, and if you don't win, it's okay. It's not okay. Because if you lose too many times as a husband, that's not going to go well. If you lose too many times as a father, it's not going to go. You lose too many times in your job, you're going to get fired. And so the hunt to pr pursue, to win in everything you do, that is life. That's for everybody. But now how you do it is everything. You can do it with a smile on your face. Love who you're around. Be passionate who you're around. And that's going to fuel your fire because it cannot be about you. I can promise you this. This is not about me. It is not about me. It will never be about me. It is about us doing it together. A community a staff, a group of players, Boise State University. And I believe so strongly that Boise State University is going to be a light on a hill to this nation, to college athletics, to academics, across the board, and it needs to be. We have the people to do that. We have the people. And I believe so strongly in my soul that it is our job as coaches to create world changers in a world that desperately needs it. There's 110, 18 to 22 year old young men on this team that need to be trained up in the way they should go because at some point they're gonna be in this world and they need to change it positively. And I know for a fact that growing elite young men will always turn into elite football players, always. It's a byproduct of creating them to be men that are always working to be the best version of themselves. But I just, the biggest thing I want you all, everybody listening, to hear my heart, is I love this team. I love these players. I love this community. And I promise you, that is action. That is sacrifice. And you will have my everything in any facet, during season, out of season, whatever anybody needs, I will always get your back because I love you. And I know what that means. I know what that's going to mean for me. That does not mean things are going to always be perfect. That doesn't mean we're going to win every single game. But I do know it's going to be a group of young men that are going to do amazing things on and off the field. And we're going to work our tail off to do that together. And we are in this together. And I promise you this, the best is still to come. And I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. At this time, I'll have Dr. Trump and Jeremiah Dickey join Spencer by his side. We'll take questions for all three participants from members of the media. Please raise your hand if you have a question when you have the microphone. Please direct your question at who it is toward. Mike Prater from KTIK and BNN. This is for Jeremiah. At what point, you know, you always talk about the head, the heart, and the gut. At what point did they all align specifically? Was there like a specific moment where it all came together for you? Last Thursday at 12.15 p.m. I wasn't looking at my clock other than someone had called me right at that moment. Seriously, Thursday at 12.15. Uh, I was actually meeting with Spencer and you all know my faith is important to me and, and I had been praying for a burning bush and they don't they don't always show up the way you think it will and through that moment in the process I was struggling I understand the pressure of my position and the role that I have and the responsibility I have and as Spencer spoke in terms of love as an action and to serve and that's who I am and as I was sitting there and I had prayed before I went in to that meeting with him and we weren't even talking about the search. I mean, he was running the program at this point. So I was, I was asking him questions. Um, and it was, and he probably doesn't even know this. Um, I was holding back tears because 
when you go, sorry. I love these guys. I love this team. I love all of our student athletes. I know you see my son here and I have two others at home and my wife, but when you're an AD and a leader, you're responsible for a lot. And I knew that I had an important decision to make that was gonna impact not just one individual, but many. And at that moment, everything came together. It was the first time that, that I was at peace. And, and I knew, then I quickly went to, how am I gonna keep a secret? Cause I'm, you guys know me, I'm pretty transparent. <laughs> So there's many of you that were calling and texting. I have like 500 text messages that I, that I haven't gotten to, so I apologize. Um, but I'm terrible at, at holding things. And so then I just tried to be normal. Which Charlotte, who's here in the back, told me, you know, after the game, JD, you looked down and, and I wasn't. I just was like, I wanted to tell them so bad. And I even told Rachel, after when I was getting my luggage, I said, I'll see you tomorrow. Now, I don't know if she recognized that, but that was my hint because I wouldn't have brought her in to say, I'm going a different direction. But that's a long-winded answer, Prater. I appreciate you, you asking that, though. But it was, that was the moment. Thank you. Uh, this one's for, for Jeremiah, too. Um, I know Spencer says that love is an action. The action of the players, how much did that have an influence on this process and what was your communication like with them? Because we heard a number of them say that they did go and talk to you about their desires to have Spencer lead them into the future. Yeah, between the first meeting that I had with them was, was the Monday after I, I had made the decision on that Sunday um, to go a different direction. And, and it was important to me to connect with our leadership in football because like I had said before, the responsibility um, that, that I had. And I wanted to hear their thoughts and what they were looking for. The other piece that was important to me is that I did not want emotion to dictate outcome. As a leader, you can't do that. There's good and bad, there's, there's processes, that's why we have a process. So I tried to stay off social media, I tried to, you know, I know everyone who was pushing and, and you know, I, the number of donors, the number of student athletes, um, it's powerful. But I can tell you today that that had nothing to do with ultimately the head, heart, and gut aligning. It was important to go through that process. It was important for someone to earn this because of what we represent. And, and I love our guys, and, and I told them yesterday, you know, uh, you know I, I knew what they were saying, and they were pretty open and public about things. Um, and I'm human, you know, it's in the back of your mind, but, but that is not why Spencer is standing up here today. Um, is that a part of a process? Absolutely. But that's why we've, we've done a really good job of keeping everything confidential. That's why we went through a three week process. Um, I, wanted, I wanted this to be the most difficult decision that I had ever made. And, and I wanted that moment at 1215 on that Thursday when everything aligned. Hopefully that answers it, Jay. Thank you for that question. Yeah, Jeremiah, when did uh, this, when, when you first went through this process, what sh initial shot maybe did you think in the back of your head Spencer had? And what was the communication you had with Spencer saying, hey, you know, go win me a championship, make this the hardest decision of my life? Were those conversations had? So, obviously, we were coming off of a New Mexico win, and I knew what the odds were. At that moment, all I was concerned about, and I knew Spencer was the right person to do it, was to lead our young men and support our staff and represent Bronco Nation. I knew that we had been to 25, I believe at that point, consecutive bowl, or we had 25 consecutive bowl eligible seasons. And I had confident and faith that we would get to 26. When we landed coming back from Utah State, and everyone turns on their phone and New Mexico was beating Fresno State. That's when it first entered in terms of the Mountain West Championship. Um, we had to control what we could control. It was a one and oh mentality always, which you all know us well enough. That's how we operate. And, and at that point is when I first started thinking, 
this is going to be possible. Um, in terms of Spencer and, and his interest in the position, um, he was very honest and transparent from the very beginning of this process. Everything he said, he had told me. I knew that this was a job that he was interested in. I knew that he loved these kids, and that's why we named him the interim. Um, as we went through the process, and obviously there were a number of, of candidates, and, and I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but I kept in touch with him. We had had some additional conversations that I'll keep private between him and I, and, and ultimately create an opportunity for, for him to, to interview. It was important for me once again. I did not want to operate in motion. I love this man. I love what he represents. I wanted to do what's right, and I wanted the process to play out. And he was a part of that process, and it played out. Thank you, John. Spencer, I mean, I guess it sounds like it was Sunday morning when you found out. Um, just to, I mean, correct me if it, the, the date it was different, a different time, but just describe the emotions that you felt when you were offered the job, and did you have any inkling between then and Thursday at 12.15? Yeah, I mean, like we've all talked about, going through this process, obviously everybody knows my heart for this place, these young men, but my number one focus in everything we did was not about getting this job. It was about finishing the season the right way for our players. We talked about before, we got a group of seniors that this is the last time someone will ever play football when this season is over. Not 2024, not 2025, 2023, and that's it. And I knew no matter what happened, if I handled it the right way for those young men, I will sleep at night and know that I did exactly what I should for those young men. Because these six-year seniors, I remember being a part of their recruiting process. I remember when there were seniors in high school trying to figure out life. Are we going to take them? Are we not? Are they coming? And so I just knew no matter what, I knew how much I wanted this job and I felt called to this place. But my number one focus was finish this the right way for these young men. And so through the whole process, that was my mindset. And all the way up until Sunday morning when Jeremiah called me and said, hey, let's meet. I was just, I was trusting the Lord and I was at peace, obviously a burning desire in my heart for this job. Let's not get that twisted. Um, but I was at peace knowing and I trust Jeremiah, I trust President Trump, I trust the administration that they would make the right hire for this place. Um, and then when it happened, I, once again, you guys know me, start crying because of the joy and emotion I have to be a part of this place, not just, not just to be a head coach. This isn't just about football. If there, it is not about that. Obviously, I, I understand what comes with this seat. It is about being the head coach for this place, for these young men, for this university at this time. That's why I'm emotional, because how much I feel called to this place, and I cannot wait for the future holds. Spencer, to follow up on that, how hard was it to kind of bury uh, your own circumstances while you did try to chase all of this? Because if Jeremiah doesn't call you yesterday morning, maybe there's a probably fairly good chance that you might have had to go explore different options to mm -hmm. chase your ultimate goal of becoming a head coach. Mm -hmm. How hard was it for you these last couple of weeks to try to bury that while you focused on the task at hand? Yeah, Jay, and I, and I mean, that's a great question. I know going through it, um, a lot of trust the Lord and just knowing I try and go through things with where my, where my heart is and what I'm driven to. And I knew if it wasn't this place, God would have something else. But I knew without a doubt, if I never coached another game in my life, it was finishing this season the right way for these kids. And that was where I was at peace. Because it was all about this group, this season. And that was my biggest focus. Yes, there were times that emotions came in and thoughts of um, what's next and going through it 100%. But my number one focus and my passion throughout every day and minute was to finish the season for these players. Spencer, uh, Jeremiah mentioned in his press release that he was excited about your vision for the future. So what is your vision for this program? How, how do you help elevate this program back to the national stage? Yeah, no, great question, Ron. And obviously a couple of the things like I hit earlier, it's I cannot wait for when people watch this team, for them to see a team that plays fast, plays smart, plays together and that absolutely loves each other, loves their coaches, loves their community. And I promise you that will bring about all the things we want. I know that. Now it's hard. It's hard. Once again, love is hard. Love is action. Love is sacrifice that we're talking about. I understand how difficult that process is going to be, but that's where finding the right players, the right coaches is going to be everything because it's all about the people. And 
there is a phenomenal foundation at Boise State. Like I said, we mentioned some coaches, Coach Cutter, Coach Peterson, all, all the way through. The foundation is laid here. It is my job to continue to carry the mantle and continue to push it forward, what's already been built here, and we need to. Like, we have to continue to push forward. And from winning games on the field to the championships, to the bowl games, to even off the field, the impact this team, this community has on the entire state, nation, that is my goal. And so it's lofty. It's going to take a lot. But it's not just me. It's our team and us doing it together that makes me so excited. Spencer, you've taken every opportunity to express how much you love these players, how much you love coaching this team. Uh, what did it mean to you to see these guys kind of give it back and advocate for you through this process and make it clear they love playing for you and, and wanted you to be the head coach? It made me very emotional. And that's, I'm being a dead horse, but because of my love for these kids and seeing them at the end of these games when, when we've won and, and the celebrations, you know, people have asked, you know, what, do you, what makes you so excited? Why are you getting emotional? Because I'm so passionate when I see these young men with the, with the tears in their eyes, with the joy in their eyes, I, I always tell them, remember how you got here. Because that process of failing, things don't go well, learn from it. Don't make the same mistake twice. Let's be better, grow from it, and fight to win the next one. That is life. And seeing our young kids be able to learn that and do it and then accomplish what they did I want them to grab that because I, I literally have told every single one, do not forget the process that got you here. It's not just about the championship game. That is the standard here winning championships, and we brought it back to Boise, Idaho. But it's the process for these young men to remember that. So that's what gets me so emotional when I see them crying, the Gatorade bath, all that. That's what gets me is when I look in these kids' eyes and I see them tear up because I'm like, don't forget the process that got you this championship. Because the same process you're going to have to have to be an elite husband, father, business owner, world changer. And that in correlation will always turn into an elite football player that we're all proud of on that blue and any other stadium we play in. That's what gets me emotional through this whole experience. Spencer, I know it's early in the process, but what are your expectations to retain Bush Hamden as your offensive coordinator? And I, there's probably not any specifics, but what is your vision for a defensive coordinator on this staff? Mm -hmm. No, great question. Mike. Still working through a lot of that stuff right now. Um, and I mean it. There was obviously some ideas in my, in my head from a staff-wise and, and all that, but really wanted to take the process the right way. And so still working through a lot of those things with our staff. We have a great staff. We have a great staff. But I want to take it holistically because a goal of mine is the, is the staff that is here, the players that are here, I want to keep them here. And that's a lot, and that's on me to make sure from all facets, financially, quality of life, them growing as coaches, I want to keep them here, but I want to, as, as we're stepping into the next season, and right now I'm going to be focused on our players and winning this bowl game. But as we transition to 2024, Mike, it's making sure the right staff is here because I want to keep them. I don't want to lose coaches. I want to continue to grow them, keep them here. Same with our players. we got to keep our players here. we got to find ways to keep them here so we can grow and develop them, not only the champions on the field, but off of it too. So in regards to the staff, we got a phenomenal staff. I think the world of Coach Hamden, and I'm just working through it holistically um, throughout this week, and I'm going to work to have more clarity as we get to the end of the week. We won't hire anybody new before the bowl game. Well, obviously, that's a process I'm going to be working on starting yesterday, but it is something right now that we're working holistically throughout the staff. Uh, Jeremiah, another question for you. I know that you've uh, been adamant you won't go too far in the details of the hiring process, but at the beginning of this, Dr. Trump said that she tasked you with a national search and thoroughly vetting this process. So as much as you can say, the links that you and your search committee went to just to lead you back to a 100-yard stroll across the blue, uh, what, what did you guys do? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to say that we just got in those planes and circled Boise and landed so we could do cool videos. Um, <laughs> That is not what happened. Uh, the, process, the process is important to, to me. It was important to our committee. Um, I have blinders, right? And so every person on our committee had, had a certain personality and experience that I needed because I wanted to make, and the, I knew the decision was important, obviously. I wanted to make the right decision. Um, 
we've been very public with our process. I'm, I'm not going to get into um, who was a part of the process and, and where we went and all of that. There's, a, there's enough out there. Um, these decisions impact lives, they impact families. And, and I, out of respect for everyone involved, um, I'm gonna keep it at that. And, you know, obviously the three weeks and we were navigating games and in season and Thanksgiving, um, there was a lot at play. And, you know, but we planned the work and worked the plan. And, and I know where we ended up, um, but I'm not sure I would have ended up there if I wouldn't have gone through our process. And, and that's why he earned it. And, and I'm grateful for him accepting and, and taking the lead of our program. Thank you, Jay. Jeremiah, what do you hope are the, the most noticeable differences in a, in a Spencer Danielson program? One, I think you're, you've seen it play out over the last three weeks, right? Their love and, and appreciation for each other, the brotherhood. Um, we understand what Bronco football represents. You know, Spencer mentioned, you know, Coach Cutter, who's back here, who, who uh, I'm so grateful for him and, and how involved he's been. And, you know, uh, he's trying to retire. We keep, I keep calling him and, and talking to him. Um, but Coach, Coach Pete, Coach Hawk, Andy, I mean, there's been so many that have been a part of this. And, you know, our job is, is – not to, I mean, I've said this before, guys. My job is to improve what I inherited, right? That is every leader's job. Some in this conference may think I was born on third base. That's okay. You know, I'm okay with that. At the end of the day, my job is to improve and to move us forward. And that's now Spencer's job. And we've seen it play out the last three weeks. Those kids play for him. They play for each other. They play for Bronco Nation. It matters to them. I wish you could be in the locker room more than, than the videos that, that we have out there. To see them and to see their reaction yesterday and the number of them that have reached out to me, they care. They're unbelievable kids. Not perfect, no one is, but they're unbelievable. And that's what I wanted. And that's what I, we got to see play out. And that experience on Saturday, I will never forget it. It was emotional for me. It was emotional for a lot of people because it's been challenging. But adversity brings the best out of you, too. And, and that's what I'm grateful for. Thank you, Johnny. Spence, uh, you've spent several years as a DC. Obviously, you're a defensive-minded coach. I'm just curious, what, what is your approach there? How, how involved will you be with the defense? How, how involved will you be with your new DC? Yep, Ron. So first off, we'll, we'll hire a defensive coordinator and will not be involved. Um, and when I say that, obviously as the head coach, involved in regards to what they're doing and making sure we're doing things that promote who we are, staying true to who we are as a Boise State um, in regards to Boise State defense. But I'm going to empower, hire the right coaches and empower them and trust them on offense, defense, and special teams. Like that is a huge goal of mine. That's why I'm, um, to Mike's question earlier is I'm going to make sure through the process that we hire the right staff because then it's my job to empower them and then trust them with their ideas and what they want to do, let's go do it. If it's the best thing for our players, it's the best thing to give us a strategic advantage, which we need, let's do it. But I'm going to hire the right coaches in the right seats, empower them, and then let them go do it. Spencer, just uh, with the changing landscape of college football, kind of an interesting uh, time for you to get your first head coaching job. What does, uh, what does Boise State have to do to kind of make the most and put itself in the best position to, to take advantage of these opportunities? Yeah, no question. I mean, it's, it's exciting times from expanding the playoff to all these things. At the end of the day, the beautiful thing about the game we play, the game we coach, is you play it one day at a time, one game at a time. And any opportunity that comes from that has to be taken one day at a time, one game at a time. It leaves, it leaves a lot of opportunities for us, which is, once again, why this place is so amazing, why it's such an exciting time to be at Boise State. But we as a staff, we as a program, as a university, we're going to take it one day at a time. We're going to wake, work our tail off one day at a time. That's going to turn into two, which is going to turn into a week, a month. So we're ready for these opportunities when we get there. Spencer, you have a lot on your plate over the next couple of weeks, obviously, but you also have a running back who everybody in the country is going to want over mm -hmm. these next couple of yep. weeks. Immediately, what can be done in terms of name, image, and likeness 
not only to help retain an Ashton Genty type, but to make sure the foundation is laid for future players down the road. Yep. The immediate part of the name, image, and likeness and keeping Ashton Genty on this roster right now. No doubt. And Mike, you're 100% right. And that's even talking with the team yesterday, that was my biggest message to them is we are going to work our tail off to keep everybody here. Goal number one, priority number one, is to keep our players. Not to go get better players. That, we have to do that too. But our goal is to keep our players here. And using Asha Genty as an example, he loves Boise State. He loves Boise Idol. He loves, more importantly, his teammates and his brothers. There's a lot that comes with that. There's a lot that we got to work our tail off um, to keep him here. But there's more too. There's more than just Ash and Genty that are going to be touted to leave Boise State. And so working through from an NIL process, the collective, all these things holistically to make sure we find the best process to keep all our players here. Doesn't mean we will, but we're going to make sure we keep our players here. And the biggest thing, and I'll say this, keep our players that want to be here. Because that's a big thing to me. I want players that want to be here. Because Boise State's different. It needs to be. Players that want to be here, coaches that want to be here. At that point, I always feel like if you want to be here, we're going to find a way to make it work. There's common ground now. If you don't want to be here, never going to twist someone's arm. But this group of players wants to be here. And we're going to work our tail off to make sure they stay. Spencer, uh, you brought up the previous coaches that have held this position before, Chris Peterson, Dirk Cutter. Um, I believe a, a week or so ago, you said you even had conversations with them. As much as you can say, what did they convey to you about being the head coach of the Boise State football team? And what did it mean for those guys to just take time to talk with you for that matter, too? Yeah. No, it, it's been, I mean, it's been all, I mean, not just using Coach Cutter because he's in the room, but, you know, a couple hours after being named interim, called Coach Cutter. And called the, you know, Coach Peterson, Coach Harson, and just going through the process because I know what I don't know. And being humble, asking questions, it's going to be no different. And I've used this analogy before. I want to be that guy that's 85 years old taking notes when anybody's talking because I always want to grow and improve. And I just think that's the way you should approach life. And so not just because this is going to be my first full year as a head coach coming up, I always want to be the best version I can for these players, for this community. And so being able to call a Coach Cutter, Coach Peterson, and pick their brain and, hey, what are some things that your first year as a head coach that I should be aware of, or just leadership in general, how to go through things. And that's going to be a constant process for me. Not this year, not next year, 10 years from now, I will, I will still be making the same calls. Sorry, Coach Cutter, get ready for those. But that's happening. Because that's, I want to and have a burning desire to be the best for this place, for these players, and that will never change. Time for one or two more. Spencer, as much as you can say, you know, 16 days from now is uh, early signing day. What do you have to do to kind of, you know, in those next 16 days to, to get the best recruiting class you can? Mm -hmm. And is a lot of that kind of foundation already set with kind of you sticking around having been already involved in it? Yeah, 100%. I mean, with, with the bowl game on December 16th, it's this week is a big recruiting week for us. But once again, first and foremost is keeping our players. And so I'm going to make sure I'm with our players a lot this week, having those conversations like Mike brings up just to see, OK, the players that want to be here, we got to find a way to make this work to keep them here. So that's priority number one in recruiting is recruiting our players and keeping them in Boise, Idaho. Then obviously our commits, these young men that have committed to Boise State, feel passionate about who we are and what we're going to be going forward. It's seeing them and their families through this week and next week, this week and next week and just confirming the fact that they're going to be signing on signing day. We'll have some early enrollees too, so making sure that process is locked in, especially because they're going to be here the first week in January. Um, and then going through that process with our commits, our current players, and then I know our recruiting staff right now is working their tail off to see if there's any other players out there we might have missed to meet some specific needs. Uh, one more kind of a, a family question. I know you said a number of times how much you love it here, but I mean, for those that don't know, your, your brother moved here. He's a firefighter here. Like you said, your kids were born here. Uh, to ask you a question about your, your wife really quick, though, what has her support meant through all this for you as a, it's been a, obviously a chaotic transition in time in your guys' life? Start crying, bro, again. Um, I will say this is, you know, so three weeks ago, a month ago, when, you know, th it went down and um, Jeremiah, Named me the interim head coach. A lot of things started happening, right? Make, keeping our team, talking about two weeks, going through it with our players, our staff. 
Um, and I did not do a good job communicating with my beautiful wife. And I'll tell you what, I went through that day and I came home at 8.30, very accomplished, feel like, no, we're on the right track. And I came home. She was waiting for me on the couch. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. That's a sweet girl. She'll get you though. And she was very, very, and which, which I needed. She was like, you communicated with all these people. You didn't communicate with me the way you should. And it was very, very opening for me. It's like, okay, I know there's a lot of people that I care about and love, but her support, who she is, I mean, and we joke about the story, you know, we, we met in college at Azusa Pacific, Division II school in LA where we played um, sports, met, got married after college, and our first apartment was 600 square feet. I mean, you could hear the next door neighbors change their mind. And <laughs> living high on life though, coaching ball, and in that moment, it's, you know, everyone's like, you should go get, you know, the, everyone has their opinion on what you should do, you just got married. And from Jump Street, the support, because it's, this isn't just about football and climbing the ladder football-wise. It's about impacting young men. And that's when we got married. I said, babe, I don't know where this game's going to take us, but it will always be about impa impacting and growing young men. And from Jump Street, she's supported me through thick and thin and have my back. And she is so much cooler, so much better than me. So you guys got to make sure you beat her after this, too, if you haven't. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody. Thank you to our participants. Thank you to everybody who attended. The Lyle Smith Society reception will take place downstairs uh, in about 15 minutes. Coach Danielson and his family will be there. So thanks so much for everybody attending today's press conference. Thank you, guys.